Hey everybody, thanks for clicking in today to part number, if you can believe it, 11. Part number 11 of the devotion series, Loves the Message, where we've talk, been talking about love out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what love is, what love is not, because love is supreme, God is love, and love never fails. So we're going to go on to the next thing that the Bible tells us that love does, or what love is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6, it says, love rejoices with the truth. Love rejoices with the truth. Rejoice means to have joy over and over again. So love is thrilled with the truth. Funny way to put it is love loves the truth. Let's think about some of the things that the Bible tells us that the truth is. One thing truth is, truth is facts in our words. People ought to be able to believe what you and I say as Christians because we're supposed to be people of the truth. So our words, the things that we say, should be truthful. They should be based in the truth, not over-exaggerating or making stuff up just to make something seem or sound more believable. But people ought to believe what we say. I mean, I have a friend that that I just I hardly ever believe anything they say, this person says, just because they're always exaggerating, they're always stretching things, and, and so I hardly ever believe what they say. But now truth isn't just about words. How about this? Truth is honesty of motive. We could say words that are technically true, but have something underneath that really isn't being honest. For instance, maybe if you said to your parents, your parents, your parents told you to go clean up your room, and then they say, did you clean up your room? And you say, yeah, I cleaned my room when what you really did was just shove everything under the bed. Well, I mean, you sorta of cleaned your room, at least a little spot of it, but everything else is pushed under the bed. So that's uh, maybe your words were true, but the motive or the honesty behind what you were saying really wasn't true. Or, you know, maybe your parents say, did you study? Did you study for your schoolwork tomorrow? And you go, oh yes, I studied. And what your parents are thinking is, did you study really good? And what you you did was maybe you opened a book and read it for three or four minutes and closed it and then went play played a video game. But yet you said, oh yeah, I definitely study. You weren't really being honest when you said that. It's interesting. Truth really is reality according to God. Whatever God says, that's what the truth is. Many in history have questioned what truth is. Some people, you may have heard them say something like this. Well, that's your truth, but that's not my truth. It was very interesting when Jesus was on trial just before his crucifixion, Pontius Pilate, the Roman uh, leader, looked at Jesus and said, what is truth? Well, that really was a good question. I'm, I'm not sure Pilate really wanted to know what the truth is, but that was a great question because, see, truth is like a compass. You know, a compass always points to north. The needle always points to north, so it helps you always find the right way to go if you're out in the woods or you're camping or you're hiking or something like that. Well, truth is like a compass to our lives. It's like a moral compass. It, it helps us find the right way in life by the words we say as well as having honest motives in our hearts. In fact, the Bible says that God's word is truth. It's the ultimate truth. In John chapter 17, 17, Jesus literally said about God's word, he said, your word is truth. And so that's why in children's church, we give kids scripture to, to memorize every week, a scripture verse. And by the way, that is your keyword, scripture, scripture. So God's word, the scriptures are the ultimate truth and all facts and ideas that you and I have as human beings must be filtered through it. And Jesus is truth infused into a human body. In John 14, 6, Jesus literally said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the world system hates the truth. So it tries to do away with truth or discredit it. People have been trying to get rid of the Bible for years and years. Back when I was a kid, they used to give us Bibles in school. Boy, that sure doesn't happen anymore. At least not that I'm aware of in public schools. John chapter 3, verse 19, Jesus said, The verdict is this, light or truth came into the world, but people loved darkness rather than the light or the truth. And so the world has been trying to discredit and, get, and try to do away with God's word. And you and I as Christians, we need to be people of the truth. So what's the number one reason? Reason why we should rejoice in truth because God is truth and we should be testifying to him and to his word and to his word as Christians so that hopefully some maybe not all but some or many will come to the truth of what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross shedding his blood and rising again so that we can be saved and know the true path to heaven so that's it for today we'll go on to the next one next week and in the meantime let's pray Heavenly Father thank you for your word your word is truth it will lead us it will guide us it is the ultimate truth and everything that we think say or do should be filtered through your word, the Bible. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, and we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said...
Thank you.